Altogether, 1,131 U-boats entered service before Germany surrendered in the spring of 1945. 863 of them executed war patrols. By the end of the war, almost 3,000 Allied ships, 175 warships, and 2,825 merchant ships had been sunk by U-boat torpedoes. To sunk enemy vessels, U-boats used their periscopes, which allowed a submarine, when submerged at relatively shallow depth, to search visually for nearby targets and threats on the surface of the water and in the air. When not in use, a submarine periscope retracted into the hull. A submarine commander, in tactical conditions, had to exercise discretion when using his periscope, since it created a visible wake, giving away the submarine's position. World War II German periscopes were made by Zeiss, a German manufacturer of optical systems, founded in the city of Jena, in 1846 by the optician Karl Zeiss. The company began producing instruments for the German army and the navy from the 1890s. The first periscope was delivered by the company in 1903 and during World War I and World War II the company focused almost exclusively on manufacturing military optics. It is a little known fact that the majority of the German U-boats were equipped with two periscopes. An observation periscope for observing the sky and obtaining bearings for navigation and a so-called attack periscope for identifying and pursuing surface vessels. Prior to an U-boat breaking surface, the captain would hunt for potentially dangerous enemy units by scanning the horizon at periscope depth. The crew would rush to take their places on the deck and the U-boat would only surface when everything was clear. The watch officer would lead the way. The periscope was made up of a lengthy steel tube that protruded from the housing for roughly 5 meters. There were prisms and lenses on both ends, and a switch at the commander's disposal let him adjust the magnification. There were two primary issues with periscopes during the war the most significant of which being the vibration. The long, unsupported tube caused turbulence on a moving U-boat when it was completely extended. It vibrated too much at six knots, making it nearly impossible to use. This was lessened by rede redesigning the pointed end to minimize the forward hydrodynamic resistance and reducing the unsupported length using an extension bracket. Still, there were vibrations, although considerably less frequently. Fogging of the lenses was the other issue. Not only had the tube to be watertight, but it also needed to be airtight because the U-boat's moist atmosphere contributed to fogging. A depth charge attack would induce any crack in the airtight shell, which would cause the tubes to fog. The attack and observation periscopes were slightly different from each other, since the latter had pedals and a seat shaped like a bicycle that could be raised and lowered together with the periscope. 
To make torpedo aiming easier, the U-boat periscopes were fitted with the appropriate equipment. After determining the target course parameters, the speed and angle on the bow, the torpedo deflection angle was calculated by means of the torpedo calculating disc or the torpedo calculator. The deflection angle was the angle between the torpedo course and target bearing line in the moment of the torpedo launch. Additionally, the optical system for displaying the bearing scale inside the periscope's view area was installed on the attack periscope. Unlike the night periscopes, this arrangement did not require a second azimuth circle to be adjusted by 180 degrees because it was situated on the same side of the ocular box as the ocular. The exterior bearing indicator and the optical system both conveyed the same value. The trainable deflection angle ring, which was employed similarly to the night periscope, was positioned over the fixed azimuth circle. Additionally, the attack periscope was equipped with extra gear to read the true bearing or bearing with respect to north. This gear was made up of the differential gear, the four-digit mechanical counter, the gyro repeater buried directly below the ocular, and the gear for linking the fixed azimuth circle with the differential gear. The coupling gear transferred the relative bearing measured with respect to the bow to the differential gear. The connection was also made the between the differential gear and the gyro repeater, which was given the U-boat course. These two numbers were added by the differential gear, which computed the true periscope bearing. The mechanical counter had four numbers that represented the true bearing value with an accuracy of 20 minutes of arc. The ability to read the true bearing facilities, the use of the periscope for both attack and navigation. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.